Good evening. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up for this Wednesday, Cinco de Mayo. I, I love saying that. Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, 2021, and we're about 7 and 10 in the uh, evening. Well, as you can see, an up day in part of these uh, stocks that we had, but then you had a very mixed bag as you turn around on other parts. XLP was down, Pave up very nicely. We've been talking about that. BND up a fraction on the day. And while you were up in these markets, uh, tonight we're getting mixed stories on the uh, futures markets. We'll see what they're going to offer. QQQ one of the weak sectors. Now, one of the bad things that I think happened is President Biden has given in to certain countries and to the WTO, the World Trade Organization, in giving away the intellectual property for a temporary basis of companies are pharmaceuticals with the COVID. Now, if I'm a pharmaceutical company, even though the government's buying and spending all this money with me and giving grants, I'm putting my own money in too. And it's my intellectual property, and they're giving it away. This can't sit well. I realize it's a pandemic. There has to be a better way to do it. Another event that happened today to look at, a federal judge threw out the CDC order of moratorium on evictions. So it was immediately challenged by the Department of Justice, but you're coming to the end of things. And for those people that uh, are going to be eventually evicted if they don't reach a deal with their landlord, watch out, time has run out. <clears throat> You'll probably get a stay on this for a while, but I'd be very, very careful. The world's changing, everything in America is getting back to normal, and on a racetrack mentality. Summer's here, city after city wants to open, you gotta work. If you don't want to work, I get it, but you're not going to be able to hide behind those CDC orders. When you look at Apple, still a correction taking place. The market's got a pattern of lower highs, lower lows, still dropping down. The first stopping spot has been the 100-day average. The next, if it's a moving average, will be the big important 200-day at 122.15. All right. Now what about the Bollinger Bands? Well, you're already in excess area. You're in an area that I would expect to see the pros covering shorts, not adding to sales. The odds of staying under Bollinger Bands are only 5% of the time under them or over them. You get overbought, oversold very quickly, and you're in an oversold condition. So what do I think the pros are gonna do? Regardless of whatever happens, I think they're taking off short positions, not adding to them. GameStop is still just drifting sideways, momentum is flat, no trend, higher high, lower low, I don't see a thing in that one yet. Pave, another new high, but this is what I told you, I'm careful about this one. Uh, you're up at the upper Bollinger Band, I've got my doubts, I think the market is long term very bullish, but I think it's overdue to churn a little bit, so that's what I think, doesn't mean I'm right. Embed, by the way, if it does turn out to embed, and it takes two days with readings, three days, I'm sorry, of settlements with readings to keep the embedded reading over 80. You have one today, certainly the day before, not the day before. Tomorrow's a very important day in that market. If it embeds, then you gotta change your opinion and start buying the brakes if you're an analyst as I am. You don't have to do anything, obviously, but that's what they'll do until that reading turns back under 79. At least that's my philosophy. I can't prove that's what they do, but if you watch the, uh, the advanced declines and if you watch the averages in here and you watch the buying pressure that can develop, you often see that in uh, stocks that do that. So you watch and you watch the markets as a whole. That's why I mentioned the advanced declines. Um, S&P Semiconductor, higher high and a vertical price drop. All you did here is you bounced back to inside the Bollinger Band, which is very, very typical, part of my charting course, and oversold. It is not a buy. This was a short cover area, if anything. That's all that I see out of it. Podex. Well, the market proved that the philosophy I had with you that we talked about was this 100-day average was pretty stiff resistance, especially it was getting close to the Bollinger Band. It never did get there, and it's not trending. You have a higher high and lower and low sideways. I'm seeing this pattern in chart after chart after chart. You have it in ESGU. You've got the higher high and lower and low tight Bollinger Bands, momentum down, no trend. XLE, 
You know, crude and Brent today challenged the $70 a barrel area. It gave it up and it's now down $1.50 from there, but it did a good job of challenging it. Again, while this market is up, it's overbought, running the upper Bollinger Band and over it. Somebody else can own it, that's my opinion. SPY. Higher high, lower low. You lost the embedded reading, which took you back to the 18-day average, and now I think you're going to do this. Spinning around, churning guys up that are trying to trade it for a breakout one way or the other. I think that's the case in the emerging markets, too. While you got the lower lows, lower high, you hit the target yesterday. I mentioned it to you. Uh, certainly, I tell it to my subscribers. That's what they pay me to do, and I, would, and I did tell them. I think the pros are going to be out. You can't be short that market beyond that number. I feel pretty good about that. I'll tell you, I feel real good about that. Uh, for, so from 77.40, you're all of a sudden back up to 78.86. That's a call. Uh, and the trend was down. What do you do here? Well, this is a big resistance area, big one. The 100-day average to the upper Bollinger Band. Momentum is correcting an overbought condition. The bias is up since you're over the 18-day average, but you have a lower, low, higher high. That is not a trending pattern. In the gold miners, they have decided to fight a battle at the 18-day average. So you have the lower highs, the lower lows, and it is refusing to stay under that 18-day average. You're in a stall area. Even momentum has stalled out. Uh, I don't see anything to do in it because of that. TLT. If the market closes under the 18-day average, I'd be bearish. If the market takes out yesterday's high, not today's, yesterday's high was 140.16, well, that could kick the market up to the upper Bollinger Band, but I don't think you're going much beyond that, to be honest. I think you're just sort of stuck here, wasting time and energy trying to trade that market temporarily. Last in the euro currency, still dropping away here, trend down. Yesterday you closed under the 18-day average. That gives you the downtrend, lower highs, lower lows, bias down, dropping at this point in time. And there's more room to drop if it wants to go even further. What would stop the downtrend is getting uh, back over 113.06, the resistance 112.66. So now, if you're like me, and you're trading an ETF, let's assume the way that you do, or a spider. You do realize that they're based, many of them, not all of them by any stretch of the imagination, but certainly DIA, SPY, QQQ, uh, the energy ones, TLT, they're looking at the futures markets on interest rates. They're, they're what drives the market. And the idea of putting together these two videos that I do in the morning I think it's a wealth of information. You get to see what the futures are doing. You get to see if it makes sense, your ideas here. I'm throwing out trade ideas in both, and I'm mentioning in both of them often what I'm seeing being the spiders or ETFs in the other. Remember, the spiders and ETFs do not drive the price. It is the futures part, the underlying part of it. So I cover a 40 charts in here. I cover about the same now in the ETFs. It used to be 34. I think I'm up to 41 or so actually right now. So I keep adding to it and I'll continue to do that because that's the service we offer. This is very inexpensive. Introductory price $16.90 for the first month. And it doesn't jump dramatically after that. But the whole key is that you're getting now each week, six videos on futures, six in the ETF arena. You're getting the dailies Monday through Friday, and then I do only weekly charts on the weekend for the longer-term trader. Give it a try. What do you have to lose? By the way, I had a comment on my jacket, which I love. Issey Miyake. If you know Japanese and you understand what a great jacket and what a designer he was, one of my favorites. I like to be out of style, I guess. You have a good one. I'm iRaps.